Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so thank you for joining me again for this conversation on Real Women Talking Money for Clever Girl Finance TV. And we're going to talk about money and relationships. I think this is a really important conversation to have because we've all been in relationships, are in relationships, and money plays a huge part. So I'm just going to start out by asking, um, joint or separate finances? Separate. Joint. Separate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. separate with one little pool. <laughs> together. I guess everybody has a different idea, and I guess we can talk about it in more detail, but um, I don't think that there's any wrong way, mm -hmm. right? I think you work, you manage your finances in the way that works best for you in your relationship because I think there are different doctrines out there and it's okay, whichever one people want to use, but um, just to kind of set the stage, especially for the ladies who are going to be watching this, mm -hmm. um, there's no wrong or right way, but I want to know why you say separate versus joint. Then I'll share my own two cents. Okay. <laughs> I, can, I can go. My husband and I are newlyweds. We have been married <laughs> actually two years in April. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, and early on in our relationship, when we were still dating mm -hmm. and we moved in together, we decided that we wanted to have our finances separate. Uh, but anything that has to do with joint ventures, whether it's our travel, home, um, or whatever projects that we're working on together, we both agree on what each person is going to put put into that. I personally, in the beginning, was a little uncomfortable with that approach because I always thought, you know, once we get married, his money is ours, my money is mine. <laughs> <laughs> it took us a while to get here. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and my husband's uh, personality is more, he's actually the sensible um, financial advisor. I call him our CFO in the marriage. <laughs> and I just have all these ideas of ways in which we can spend money. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of had to come to a, an agreement that worked for both of us. And, and, and that's great because then I figure out what I want to do with my pot. Um, I save to splurge and then I, keep, I save for things that are important to me. Um, getting debt free was one as well. So it, it, it works for, for what we need. Mm. That's good. So my husband and I, um, we've been married for, it'll be 15 years. So it was really the first job I had out of college. I was already with my husband at that time. And um, so we, right away, I don't think I even considered separate. Our parents didn't have it separate. So really anyone that I knew, um, my friends weren't married at the time, so I didn't have other ladies to talk about what everyone else was doing, and we just really went in. Um, so all of our finances were joint, all of our decisions were joint. Um, and so now you take us through, now we have three kids, and life has changed, and we've made a lot more money over the years, and um, I wasn't working um, because I stayed at home. So things have really kind of continued to grow, but we've always just um, made all of our decisions together, talked about what we were spending, um, you know, if he has a big purchase he wants to make, we just talk about it and usually it's, you know, um, it's not that um, big purchases are not usually the, the stuff that we have a hard time with. It's really that I spend most of the money, <laughs> right, for the kids or what our life is and giving here. I just want to, like, give everybody money and I just, you know, I don't even look at the um, bills. He pays all the bills. So I feel like that sometimes is a challenge because I'm not really keyed into what, is coming in and what is going out. I'm just mm. living life and <laughs> living like, your best life. <laughs> so, is there like a dollar amount where you guys have to talk about it? Or, like, say you could spend up to five hundred dollars and don't ask me any questions. No. Or is there a dollar amount you guys? There come really in? isn't a okay. dollar amount. I feel like I, I think naturally, if it were a, a, probably over two hundred dollars, maybe that then it would just kick in. Like, maybe I should just run this cool. by. I mean. <laughs> So it doesn't even, I think I, we're just always communicating. We do communicate pretty mm -hmm. well. So I feel like, um, like if he wants to buy a new Xbox or something, because he's into gaming and everything, um, usually he's just telling tell me this is what I'm thinking about. And if I'm really against it, I'm going to just let him know that's, I don't think that that's a good time or this is why he shouldn't do it. And it doesn't mean he's not going to, it just means the conversation has begun. Mm -hmm. And if I really wanted to go splurge on clothes, 
then it's not something I do all the time. And so he's totally sort of behind it, I think. Because okay. in I think because we started that way, it's been easier for us to grow in that mm-hmm. same yeah. mindset. Mm-hmm. Different than if we were coming into our marriage having worked for a long time and really, again, whether you're debt-free or someone's caring, mm-hmm. um, um, you know, debt coming into a relationship, I do think that that makes a difference because all of my friends have separate finances. <laughs> so it's really interesting. I feel like we're just really old school. <laughs> so... Um, I'm not married yet, but this conversation makes me think about, okay, how am I going to approach this um, with my spouse? And I think that I would um, like to think, keep things separate just because like I've worked for mine and he's worked for his. Um, but we will have like a pool of money where, you know, for big purchases like a home or a car. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking a lot about it um, so I can go in and talk about it and not just go in and not have a conversation because then I feel like that's when, you know, the fights and the disagreements will start and mm-hmm. yeah. uh, right. you don't assume what he's that. thinking, right? Right. Yeah. So it's like this before we even like sign those papers, it's like, okay, let's have a talk about money <laughs> and if I wanted to do something on my own, I can and there's no like restrictions. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. yeah. Well, um <clears throat> me being divorced <laughs> and now single um at the time i think for me i don't mind us putting the money together but i think that i need to choose a partner who's also financially responsible Mm -hmm. when i was married he was irresponsible and i was the one managing the finances and i was kind of the breadwinner at the time and it would just stress me out because he would just like take $40 out the bank and he only had 35. So then there was like this fee, right? So (laughs) how do you take out $35 and have to pay a $20 like overdraft fee? Like that makes no sense. Like, did you not know? Cause I kind of always know what's in my bank account. So it baffled me that this dude did not know what was in his bank account. So parts of me would probably want to have something for myself because sometimes I make those above $200 purchases. <laughs> and I don't want to hear anything about it because I work hard and I have to like live my best life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. Myself. <laughs> yes. But then also for him too, like if I shop and I'm with you, like I'm going to buy you stuff as well. So if you come, if I'm coming to the door, you're like, how much money do you spend? Well, baby, you know, here's some stuff for you too. <laughs> it feels a little better. So yeah. I think it, it depends on the person, right? I think once we get, I find that next love, final love of my life, um, <laughs> we'll talk about if it works best. I just think that he needs to be financially responsible mm-hmm. and then have good communication yeah. so that we can talk through mm-hmm. um, some of the bigger decisions. Right. Yeah. I think... Communication is definitely key because, like you said, don't go in without having that com- conversation. Mm-hmm. I had this lofty idea of how it should go down, <laughs> and I immediately got a reality check. Like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> 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 and then, but now, even though we keep it separate, he's still my accountability partner. Mm-hmm. So when I started my Clever Girl Finance journey, mm-hmm. I um, shared my creed <laughs> with him, and my husband. When he sees behavior that does not align with yeah, the creed, like, excuse me, <laughs> I got a text message. Hey, babe, can we have um, a money conversation? Oh, that's good. And yeah. it's like Monday morning. I'm getting ready for work, and he wants to talk about my spending of late. <laughs> and you know, it's just like you remember you told me to, to keep you accountable. Yeah. Let's just refresh on what the goals yeah. are. Yeah. You know what some of these things are they going that's back? Great. Um, because this is what you were trying to achieve by the end of the year. Going back to like circle of influence in a way, mm-hmm. our yeah. spouses have to be yes. one of right. those people for us. Yeah, at Absolutely. least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So for me, so I've been married almost 10 years now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I first got married, I think our finances have evolved um, just due to like, you know, just life. But when I first got married, I had this whole idea similar to you. And my idea was that, well, I already have my own money. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to keep my finances separate. And because he was still in school. And while you work on getting our money, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to keep my finances separate. And he, like, my husband is, like, very, like, 
I would say I'm the money manager in the house. He was just like, okay, if that's what you want to do, fine. I'll have a separate account. And so we did that. I had separate finances. He had separate finances. Um, but I don't know. I think there are things that happen organically where there are just bills that he would pay and I would pay. It was never really like, okay, let's see how we're going to divide it. Mm -hmm. We just, whoever paid what, whenever was how it worked. And we've never had an issue with that. But then as, um, and I used to be the breadwinner. And now that we have kind of, evolved in our relationship we have kids and the tables have turned i started a business i'm no longer the breadwinner <laughs> he's making more money than me um and we have kids like i said it's been something that we've been thinking about a lot is what if something happens to me or something happens mm -hmm. to our you know my spouse and then what happens like you know and so we've gotten into this space where like our, our finances are still separate to a degree, but like we now have joint accounts where my name's my name is on all his accounts mm -hmm. and his name is on all my accounts and there's full disclosure. So like we have logins and passwords. I can go check what's happening in your account if I want to, even though we don't. And then we also have that situation around, okay, when is your, when do you have to talk about it when it comes right. to spending money? Mm -hmm. So ours used to be $500. Um, and it was like a text or just, I would just mention it for months on end so that when the transaction <laughs> hit the accounts, the well, he wouldn't know when it hit the account cause it was my account, but when the item came into the home, <laughs> <laughs> remember when, <laughs> cause the first thing he asked me when I, like, I'll tell him this whole story, you know, this bag is so beautiful, the leather, the hardware, you know, oh my God. And he's like, how much did it cost? That's all he cares about. Like, That's how much did it cost? I'm like, um. So I make sure I start telling him in advance. But like now, our finances are joint to a degree, but still our day-to-day -day transactions are separate. Because when we got married, we were older. We we're both been working for years, and I just couldn't imagine myself explaining to my spouse how much I spent doing yeah. my hair or why. Mm -hmm. You know, like it was just something I didn't want to do. So we're kind of like evolving. So how do you manage um, disagreements? with money mm -hmm. like you're not on the same page there is going to be an argument you already know when that's going to happen mm -hmm. yeah. or there has been an argument how do you navigate yourself out of that or usually sure? i think it takes time mm -hmm. you know we just don't rush into making a quick decision because it's just going to need i'm going to need to think about it or he's going to need to think about it we need to come back to it again at another time especially if there's been an argument like i just think time needs to sort of settle mm -hmm. um because we both need to feel heard, and a lot of times in an argument, um, someone doesn't feel heard, you know, and it, sometimes it doesn't end. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think that we usually can work through it, but sometimes I need a day, because I'm the hothead in the relationship, so I get real worked up. <laughs> and then I really need to, like, take a breather, think it through with a clear head, instead of just reacting on emotion to whatever it is that has upset me. Um, but usually we can work through it. It just can't always be worked through in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I need to pray about it. I need to really think through um, where he's coming from, why he's coming from that spot. Um, and then usually once I'm calm, can work it out. I think um, arguments are a real bottleneck. Um, for example, if we have something that we want to work on, let's say um, we want to buy or this, there's a, an investment opportunity that we're looking at, looking at. In my head, once we say, we're thinking about doing this, I have already closed. <laughs> <laughs> In his head, he just wants to first talk about it mm -hmm. and then research and, you know, go through the motions. But I've already told everyone that this is what we've done. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I've already quit my job and then started looking for apartments elsewhere. Like, you know, yeah. you've moved to the new city in your head. It, it's, it's like that. So for me, and, and usually when things like that happen, it's like, ugh. but I said, but we said we're doing it. So we need to, it's, I see it as a bottleneck. So we need to really get on the same page. And sometimes we may still be at that bottleneck for weeks on end because we, we both need to feel comfortable mm. with the way forward. Mm -hmm. And then I have to kind of like, go back to everybody that, and tell my job or whatever that, hey, Take me by back. the way. <laughs> Can I keep your job a little longer? <laughs> it's still not confirmed yet. But I think communication, um, like, like yeah. just like you, I'm the hothead in our marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and he will still maintain um, the calm and repeat what he was saying. And until I come back to this level, <laughs> and then we can have the conversation. And, and then usually we can compromise. Yeah. 
So I think um, from my past experiences, I think that being intentional about your delivery is important as women mm-hmm. because when we're passionate about something or we th- we're passionate about our idea and where, where we stand, mm-hmm. we're very direct. And I work in like a technology company <laughs> with males, so I'm coming to you with a problem. We're talking about it like it's a problem, right? Like yes. it's and my fe- I'm not attaching feelings, but men have egos, right? So we yeah. have to be careful where we're not belittling mm-hmm. in our, our delivery. Yeah. Right, and really talk about like, hey, like this is what you did and this is kind of the impact. If you're like, can I help you? Is there something I can explain differently? Just be mindful of that because I'm, I'm so direct sometimes mm-hmm. and I have to catch myself and just be like, girl, like yeah. he is <laughs> not a boy. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. deliver it in a way that you would want to deliver it to you, right? Mm-hmm. So I think being very mindful of and it sometimes requires us taking a step back in mm-hmm. a moment to kind of breathe yeah. and calm ourselves down and mm-hmm. then talking to them like they're a person and yeah. you know, giving them grace as well from yes. that mistake or I the agree. Issue. Like yes. I I think for me every money argument I've had with my husband has to do with my approach and it's never about the money argument. itself. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've had to step back and say, Okay, would if he talked to me like that, how would I react? Yes. You know, I'd be like, you know what, where's that divorce lawyer? <laughs> Get the papers. <laughs> like, I would, like, I would not even, like, I would be so upset. Mm-hmm. And I think that, depending on who you're with, like, my husband, for instance, he has this, like, very calm, very tolerant, but he just won't have the conversation because he doesn't like how he's being talked to, mm-hmm. which yeah. nobody would like. I wouldn't even talk to myself like that sometimes. <laughs> and so I realized that adjusting my approach made all the difference. Mm-hmm. because I would come in like you especially I worked in the male dominated field we worked in the same company and I already had the master plan before we had the conversation <laughs> and I would come up like you know what we're talking about money this is what we're going to do one you're going to do this two you're going to do this <laughs> and he's like excuse me what's happening exactly <laughs> you know and so sometimes we really have to sometimes we, we have to put up this powerful person that we are mm-hmm. to deal with situations at work or in our day to day lives yeah. But that doesn't always work with our partners. Yeah. And well, you we have to be mindful. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have to be mindful of that. So um, I think your approach matters. And I think the first step to the approach is just talking about it, the communication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of couples, a lot of people don't talk about money in mm-hmm. their relationships. Yeah. And they build up resentment mm-hmm. upon resentment upon mm-hmm. resentment, and they can never have the conversation. So like I said at the beginning, when it comes to you know relationships and money, there's no wrong or right way. I think the most important way is manage it, managing it in a way that works for your relationship, right? I think the biggest mistake people make is they listen to what that person says, and they take that person's plan, and they try to do a one size fit all mm-hmm. on their relationship mm-hmm. but that may not necessarily work because you guys know each other or you should <laughs> <laughs> you should right <laughs> and you you know what works best yeah. for you and it may not be somebody else's style or plan and so i think it's you want to assess all the different plans out there look at the different styles mm-hmm. and say okay let's yeah. test this out for both of us mm-hmm. and i think it's also important that people remember that it's not a competition, right? Mm-hmm. Your, your spouse is your partner. Your yeah. team members on the same team, and mm-hmm. together you guys can build so much more. And I say that because I had to learn that. Because, like I said, I started my relationship, my marriage out with you know what? I have my own money. I don't know about you, but I got yeah. money. And <laughs> you know, it doesn't work like that, right? Because um, now that we're more in sync with our finances and we're planning together, and mm-hmm. we're doing so much more than I could ever have done mm-hmm. on my own. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank for being you. here and sharing. Thanks, Bola. I appreciate you, ladies. <laughs>